Before we get started, we've got four incredible sponsors to talk about that are helping to support this podcast every single week. First up, and Christy actually uses them too, GraphX Source. If you need a solution to help improve efficiency and reduce costs in your art department, GraphX offers industry-leading outsourcing options for your shop. They truly become a part of your team. And Christy was actually using them on the quoting side. So when she gets a quote inquiry in, she wants to send something out very quickly with a rough mock-up and the pricing right there so that customers can be able to approve, pay, and move forward. She's found great success there. Hit up graphxsource.com for your art staffing needs and use Printavo Pod 24. Printavo Pod 24, that gets you half off your first vector set or digitized order. Multicraft underscore daddy. We're doing this every single week. We're going to keep doing it. If you pull up your Instagram account, Dave at Multicraft Screen Printing and Digital Supplies is sending out PMI tape to one lucky winner every single week. For over 50 years, they have been providing the industry with top brands at competitive pricing. If you mention the pod, you get an extra 10% off your first order. Give them a try. And uh, we truly appreciate their support. Supercolor. Supercolor is the world's best heat transfer. It's made for screen printers, by screen printers, and they really understand the pressures and expectations of a screen printing business. That's why they pride themselves on being super fast and super easy. Stephen Farrag, Out of Campus Inc. Uh, is really using, especially in times of a pickle <laughs> or being in a pickle. <laughs> He's a pickle. <laughs> um, but uh, they help a lot. Their customer service is also awesome. And you have any issues, you reach out. They are really great to be able to help be a partner of your shop. Printavo15, that's the coupon code. Printavo15, that gets you 15% off your order. Last but not least, easy way. You know you shouldn't be spending all day cleaning dirty screens. Easy Way's line of environmentally conscious chemicals will get the job done faster and more efficiently, costing a fraction of the cost per screen. 701 and 842 are Campus Inc.'s favorite easy way chemicals to clean dirty screens. They work with 100 plus distributors out there. And if you really need a partner to help you with the how to's and best practices, easy way is there to give it a go. Kobe, how's your, uh, how's your year been kicking off? We were recording this on uh, Feb 8 here, 2024. <laughs> it's been a, it's been a good year so far. Been really busy. Um, Normally, this is a slow period in the industry, but uh, it's been kicking off great. So we're doing, um, we got a lot of stuff going on. What type of work do you guys generally do or type of customers do you guys have? So I would say we're about a 70-30 split between, um, you know, contract and custom. So most of it is going to be the contract work, um, you know, really the music merch industry. Uh, and then a lot of it, you know, the 30% of it um, comes from local businesses, uh, maybe, you know, larger businesses that aren't part of our contract, you know, client uh, clientele. Um, so we got a pretty comfortable, you know, split between the two. Interesting. Did that come from, were you in the music space before or how, how did you dive into that? Uh so we started in uh, Los Angeles. We were House of Ink. Um, so my parents started uh, House of Ink in 1994. Um, and being in LA, uh, you know, just printing, you get to know a bunch of crazy, you know, people in the industry. Uh, we ended up getting kind of just um, the music merch industry just became our niche, um, really entertainment in general. Uh, so we were, you know, printing for fifth son, Sony pictures, um, you know, universal, uh, Warner music, um, you know, kind of the large conglomerates in that industry and, uh, just kind of fell into that. So that's taken us now. We've been doing it for 28 years. Um, so it's been a lot of fun. It just How was it print some really cool stuff. What was like a coolest group that you've printed for? Oh man. Um, I, I mean, honestly, there's a lot of bands that come through that we get to print. Um, 
we did get to do uh rage against the machines tour uh you know two years ago um so we did fifty thousand pieces for them uh which was cool you know um since they haven't toured for so long so we got to put our name on that that merch uh but you know guns and roses i'm looking at a few ed sheeran social distortion um and there's a lot of cool bands that come through here wow so you guys are pretty plugged in um we had a podcast i'm sure you've heard of culture studio who also does you know music merchandising too they kind of tell the story of the craziness and the last minute stuff and the um not that other spaces don't deal with this too but it seems like it's pushed to the extreme <laughs> is that what you guys feel yes um you know screen printers in this industry uh I would say we are the last to find out, you know, the critical information that we need to, uh, you know, work. Um, we're kind of like the redheaded stepchild in the entertainment industry. Uh, and so, yeah, it's the, the turnaround times, um, are just getting worse and worse, you know, crazier, uh, where we'll get blanks in and it'll be, you know, 1200 pieces. We'll get blanks in, you know, that morning and have them out the same day. Uh, cause they're being overnighted to a venue, you know, uh, somewhere else. So it's getting, it's getting nuts. <laughs> That's pretty crazy. Okay. So the transition from your parents to you running the business, what was that like? And the reason I think about that is I think about my parents, uh, I couldn't work with them. <laughs> I mean, uh, you know, we, we just have two different methodologies and, you know, neither one is right or wrong. It's just different. Working with my parents and, you know, taking over, uh, I've always been involved in screen printing. Um, I mean, I grew up in it. Uh, they named House of Ink the same day that they, you know, named me and went to the hospital, you know, to give birth. <laughs> so, um, I was born into screen printing, I guess you could say, but, um, it's a challenge every day. It's, you know, it, it can be frustrating at times. Um, but my dad is, uh, awesome. He's a, you know, I'd say a master, you know, separator and artist. He's been doing it for so long that it's, you know, second nature to him. Um, and he kind of stays in his, you know, in his, uh, lane, um, Karina, my mom, she is the finance, you know, major. Uh, so she's all the financial, the business end of it. Um, and so I am a good mix between the two. Uh, and so we kind of, you know, tag team it and, and make it work. Interesting. Yeah. The, uh, dynamics are definitely, it seems a bit different as, like you said, people will focus in different areas and, that's where they find solace. But obviously it's not perfect like that all the time. Uh, as you mentioned, <laughs> is there an example of like a time that you, know, you guys really had to hash it out? I would say my dad and I have a very, um, you know, we're pretty much the same when it comes to our you know, personalities. And, um, you know, one thing, it, you know, we say it like it is and don't hold anything back. And uh, so if for some reason he's got a problem, you know, he'll say it. Uh, and, and vice versa. And so there's been a few things where, you know, we're on the press and, you know, I need something for production um, or, uh, you know, he's a little s slow in his older days now, you know, with art, uh, we can butt heads and, you know, go at it. But at the end of the day, we're working for the common goal. And, uh, you know, we still kind of hug it out after and it is what it is. Move on to the next day. Yeah. That's cool. How did you think 2023 was? I, I saw you at Long Beach. Um, some of the things that uh, I was asking around at Long Beach is, hey, how, how was your year? I was trying to get a, a very rough survey. And many of the results, I think if they were... I, okay, I'm, I'm going to get a uh, guesstimate here. If you were above about a million or so a year in sales... People were saying that it was either flat or a little bit down. Now, if you were in a, uh, you know, very niche area where you really dominated, that was very different. How, how did you um, guys see it? I mean, I would agree with that. Uh, we were pretty, it, it was pretty slow all, all the way around. Mm -hmm. 
we started noticing a, uh, you know, a pickup later in the year. Um, I think that at least for us, since, you know, a lot of what we do is based on the music, you know, industry, um, with COVID that kind of ruined things. And so, you know, bands are now starting to tour again, come out with new music. Um, you know, we did, uh, the green day merch that just came out for the saviors, uh, album. So, um, you know, things are starting to pick up and we kind of saw that at the end of 2023, but I would say as a whole, uh, we were pretty flattened down. If that gives you an idea of what we normally do, Mm -hmm. um, you know, it's, it's, we're looking forward to a good 2024. How, how did you take that? You know, I, I, I think we've been used to such a growth a decade for the last 10 years or so, uh, kind of ignoring the bumps of, of COVID time, but you know, was it okay? It's not bad. You know, we'll, we'll, we need to just move some things around or, or was it questioning the business model or, you know, how, how did you guys think about it? For us, it was um, a con- kind of a time to reset. So we really looked at what we were doing. And, um, you know, to make money, we've kind of always said that there were really, you know, three things that we could, you know, focus on. Um, you know, one being increasing our efficiency, which is actually, you know, why we um, started, you know, using Printavo, uh, you know, so that would be the first one you can, um, you know, lower your prices. Uh, but, you know, at the end of the day, you don't really want to, um, you know, lower your consumable costs. Uh, but your reps get tired of you, you know, nickeling and diming them for, you know, white ink or, you know, cami spray. <laughs> um, and so you can only, you know, argue and, you know, uh, talk to them about that, you know, so much before they just don't want to deal with it. Um, you know, and the manpower issue that everyone is having. Uh, so really this year we're focusing on efficiency, um, you know, automating where we can and, uh, you know, making sure we have good workflow throughout the, the shop. Did you, and feel free to say or not say, if volume was down last year for a majority contract shop, was it an unprofitable year or were you guys able to squeak through with a bit of profit? Um, no, we still made uh, a good profit. Gotcha. Um, so his so, top line was yeah. just down. Yeah, it was just our overall volume, I would say, was down. Um, but we still we still made a profit. Were there customers in the contract world where you felt that... Hey, we should focus more on these or less on these because of you diving more into that efficiency focus or like looking around for cost savings. Yes. Uh, there are, um, you know, very large clients that I would probably I mean, I see some of the music, uh, <laughs> merch now yeah. coming out and it's insane. I mean, it's like eight, 10 print locations. Some of these, some of these yeah, you know, some t-shirts them- or hoodies or things. Well, and the biggest thing that we've seen is no one wants to hold stock anymore. So the order numbers are getting, you know, less and less. The overall quantity and pieces are getting less and less. Um, but the frequency of, you know, the printing is, you know, the reorders are just, you know, lining up. Um, and so, you know, I, I will say back in the day, we, you know, used to be able to charge for, uh, screens and, you know, emulsions and, you know, color mixing and all of that. Um, nowadays we don't, we don't get to, uh, the, you know, companies don't want to pay it. Why? Uh, to the They'll printer. just go somewhere else. You think they'll go somewhere else. Hmm. Yep. And so there's, you know, and this is, um, there's always a, you know, garage printer that wants to get their name out there um and show what they can do and so they might take a job from you know uh one of these merch companies uh just to kind of get their name out and you know even if uh they may not make as much it's still a few cents lower than probably what we're printing it for and so um you know there's no union 
in the screen printing industry, you know, there's no set pricing where we all come together. Mm -hmm. And so everyone, you know, it's kind of, you can get undercut pretty quick. Um, but you know, our, I will say our quality is what keeps these, you know, clients coming back. How do you think about that? Right. Cause I, I think that's what draws people away from contract is that cutthroat pricing aspect around pennies where they're like, a, I'm not even marking up the garments anymore. And B, you know, I'm getting undercut by such slim margins from, from who knows what. Yeah. I mean, is, is that where you think you keep diving into, but that's your specialty or is it, Hey, we'd actually like to diversify more or what's your perspective on it? Um, I mean, a lot of the, a lot of the contract stuff that we do, um, are customer, you know, customer supplied garments. So we don't even, you know, mark up anything on the garments, um, since they are supplied. So it's purely just printing costs. Mm -hmm. Um, and, uh, there's, you know, the music industry is actually much better. There's a larger profit margin on that, um, than there is kind of the sports industry. Um, and so, you know, the beauty of it is, is that, um, you know, our shop is at a point where I can turn things down if I don't feel comfortable with, you know, printing it or if I don't feel comfortable with the margin. Um, if I know that it's going to take away press time from other, you know, um, uh, clients that I really want to focus on, you know, we've been able to turn things down, um, you know, like printing for the Super Bowl this year. Um, and so, that's been a great tool for us. Um, but overall, uh, yeah, it's, you know, we kind of give them the pricing and they come back and ask for it lower and we see what we can do, but you know, it's, it's worth us, you know, focusing on certain, uh, contract clients and really building a relationship with them because, you know, we have, we have a lot of work, so it's, it's good that it just keeps it steady. So when you're sending your quote, are you holding firm or is there room or what's your strategy? Um, with contract, you know, clients, we uh, build a price matrix for them that mm -hmm. they have, um, that they know will print for, you know, no questions asked. And uh, it's kind of like a, you know, no hassle, no, you know, really, uh, you know, no argument type thing. So we send it to them and... Um, that's what they work off, you know, off of when they build their quote. And so they kind of send us a PO and, uh, really, f you know, for us, it's, Hey, do you want this job or not? And we either, you know, take it or we don't. Got it. Are there other aspects of value? I mean, I got to imagine the quick turns, maybe some sort of customer service that they really like doing that adds more value than just the cost of printing, right? Because to your point, I'm sure anybody can find someone, you know, it's it's a competitive market. It's more maybe commodity based even as well. But how do you, uh, like, how do you guys add more value from there? And, and like even more specifically, right? Because everybody's going to say, hey, we've got good service or, you know, we're very yeah. helpful or so on. It's um, really for us, I would say the the key, you know, factors are, our location. So, you know, being in Charlotte, it's a, um, I mean, it's a international hub. Um, so we are pretty much a one day ship, uh, you know, anywhere on the East coast, mm -hmm. um, and, you know, two day ship max to, you know, uh, some parts of the Midwest and, uh, you know, we've been overnighting more boxes and, you know, tour merch to California than we ever did before. And I don't know if that's just because the prices in California are so high that they're, you know, sending it, sending it to us and then we're sending it back to California. Um, but it's, <laughs> yeah, that's uh, expensive but it's for, been, you know, 20,000 or, yeah. or whatever the order quantity is overnight. It's it, yeah, it's nuts. Um, I'm actually, you know, doing that today with a, uh, a few pieces um, to where they will be in, uh, LA tomorrow morning. Um, and it's so, you know, that's the, the crazy part, but 
we, you know, have a good location, um, being in Charlotte, like I said, you know, two hours from, or, uh, really two hour flight from anywhere. Um, but it's a good centralized hub. We also specialize in, um, you know, skin tones, uh, and, you know, simulated process, wet on light printing. And so, um, we do a lot of that, uh, we kind of joked around that we don't get the easy, you know, one color prints anymore. It's, you know, usually a 12 color, uh, you know, on a black tee and it's, it's fun, you know, figuring it all out and, and doing it and seeing your, you know, what you printed sell for $60 at a concert, you know? Um, but that's what kind of sets us apart. Uh, we're a tight, you know, tight group. We only have 15 people. Um, so when these, you know, big, uh, you know, companies are reaching out, uh, they speak to me directly, you know, they don't get passed off onto, you know, different people or different sales reps. Um, they really just speak to me. And so they know exactly who they're talking to. Cool. Yeah. Those are some good, those are some good characteristics. I, you know, even with a round price or or a round pricing, sorry, when was the last time you guys looked at pricing? I mean, as uh, when we were at Long Beach, it was interesting people digging into it, but really haven't for quite some time looked at pricing. I think people had to from inflation changing after COVID and just their costs going up so much. Is that something you guys do regularly? Have you looked at it? at all recently or yeah so we're actually in the middle of looking for different vending options as far as consumables and inks go you know we've noticed things have been harder to get companies raising their prices on inks and you know consumables and that's a way for us to kind of control those costs is you know who we get it through who has what and what's offered really we are right now using a rutland c3 mixing system Um, and so we mix, you know, pretty much every single color, uh, in the Pantone book I've got on our shelf. Um, you know, and we have to for these clients, but again, we don't get to charge for it. So, um, having kind of, you know, we're looking at going to some standard RFU, you know, ready for use colors that we can just pull off the shelf, separate with and buy in bulk. Um, that way we're not going through as much, you know, base and, and pigment, um, which that can add up, mm-hmm. uh, when you're doing, you know, Ed Sheeran, you know, rage against the machine, you know, we were going through probably five, $6,000, you know, in just, you know, uh, silky cotton white alone throughout the week. Um, so it can add up really, really quick. Uh, and those consumable costs and ink costs, you know, that's what comes back to haunt you. Is that what triggered to look at your pricing or it was it just a manual like, hey, every Feb or every January, let's take a look at this? We normally look at it every, um, you know, really like every November, December. Once we start getting slower um, during those winter months, we kind of, you know, reset and see, you know, uh, if we need to you know, raise our prices or if we can, you know, lower it, um, try to stay fair, you know, around the industry. Uh, we have a lot of, you know, friends in this, you know, um, that are screen printers, uh, obviously a bunch of different shops that we look at that are kind of similar size that are doing similar things to what we're doing. And so we'll kind of compare prices and see, you know, what we can do to get more, uh, work from maybe a, uh, you know, Warner music or, uh, whoever it may be. Um, and, uh, and so that's kind of how we break it down, but we look at it once a year and really, um, this year with the efficiency thing that we're focusing on, it's, you know, a bigger dive into it and, you know, uh, partnering up and, you know, with some of these, um, vendors to, you know, get some, some good equipment and good things going. Um, in our shop. So, yeah. Have you had to raise pricing on a customer recently? Cause I always feel like that's a scary, uh, scary proposition and you know, it works its way out, 
whether they leave or whether they stay in each way, I think both are, you know, good takeaways, but yeah. How'd it go for you guys? Yeah. The way we break it down, it's, you know, before it was like one to three colors, you know, three to six colors of this and, you know, six to nine and nine plus. And so, you know, we ended up breaking that down even further and uh, adding a one to two color, you know, breakdown, um, you know, a three to five, uh, five to eight, you know, an eight plus. Um, and so it was kind of, you know, we were, we seem to have been getting a lot of the eight plus nine plus color, uh, you know, uh, jobs. Um, and you almost felt like we were getting taken advantage of a little bit, uh, for our pricing. And so by breaking that up even more, uh, we're able to kind of control it a little better. Um, our minimum order quantity for, uh, contract is 300 pieces. Um, and so, you know, we looked at the option of going below that. Um, but yeah, it's, it's something that you have to be careful with, you know, uh, kind of ease them into it. How, how did you ease it? Like, as in phone conversation or was it like raising pricing over, Hey, we have to do this over the next six months. It was kind of like, you know, Hey, um, over a period of, of time, we're looking at raising these costs, you know, uh, this is what we can, you know, what we're going to, this is what we can do. Um, and really it was, you know, we raised some of the print cost, but we were able to lower the consumables cost, like the screens and setup charges for new jobs. And so that's kind of how we equaled it out. You know, I wanted to try to push the, you know, bigger merch companies to give us, um, you know, larger orders, larger quantities, you know, not the 300 pieces that are going to be run, you know, three times over the next couple of weeks, it's, you know, Hey, why don't we do a run of, you know, 1200 and, you know, see how that goes. So it's more incentive for them to give us, you know, higher quantity pieces, you know, um, but uh, also to not, you know, break the bank for them, which you know, it's very hard to do. Yeah. I mean, to your point though, the music merch is expensive at the door. Now I, I'm sure there's multiple hands pulling from this, uh, you know, the, the stadium or the record label and, you know, the musician takes some, of course, and shop. So there's a lot maybe there. Maybe there's another middleman that's, that's, you know, contracting the actual job out. It's interesting. I, I almost wonder if increasing pricing is like half psychological and half the actual, you know, math and numbers behind it. Cause you're, you're, you're almost like fighting your mind. It feels like at times it's like there's the, the keep the price the same guy on the right hand on the shoulder. And then the, the, the like devil shoulder side is like increase it. Right. And you're like, ah, oh, no, I, you know, it, we try, it's fair. Like, it's okay. We'll, we'll look at it again next year. Yeah. It's always the companies that you, you know, you know, you could, you could probably ask for more and they, I know they could give it to you, but um, you know, they're they're the ones that want the lowest, you know, price possible. Trying to see what your, you know, lowest dollar amount that you would take, cut their costs. And then, you know, for us, like you said, the, you know, you got two shoulders going on. It's like, man, I know I printed that for 95 cents per print. And, you know, we go to the show and you see it up on the on the wall for fifty five dollars. <laughs> yeah. And you're like, all right, there there's there's something not adding up, right? you know, but, um, it just is interesting. Like, have you ever thought like if, if we raised all of our prices, let's say 15%, would the net gain be greater? Obviously some people will drop, but would the net gain be greater as in would majority of your customers ride or, you know, continue riding with you and, and, and look, and I think, they're experiencing increased costs across the board or, uh, you know, around other things. Granted, you're right. Mm -hmm. Maybe there's more competition. It's, it's harder to find maybe a, I don't know, a concert hall assembly team or something. I, I'm assuming there's not as many options to pick from yeah. there, but it, I don't know. It's an interesting exercise to think about. Yeah. I mean, we, um, 
like I said before, you know, there's no like contract screen printing union, you know, yeah. where if there, you know, if there was, and we all just said, Hey, like, let's keep it standard. Like this is the you know price we're going to raise it. And you know, that's it. Um, that would be pretty cool. Uh, I think, you know, all screen printers would probably benefit and make some more money on their, uh, per print. Um, but it's, uh, you know, again, there's always, there's always a hustler that's, you know, looking to get into the industry to get some of their names on this big stuff that, um, that will take it for, you know, for less. And, uh, so it's kind of like, you know, how do I, that's why we've just kind of kept our prices the same and just said, you know what, if, if they, you know, want to come back, it's the, you know, service, it's the quality, it's the turnaround times, you know, I've got, um, I know exactly what I can print, you know, by the minute, uh, you know, so it's kind of the whole picture that really keeps, um, our clients coming back to us. Mm -hmm. Um, have you guys gotten dragged into doing fulfillment yet or no? Uh, yeah, I'm actually doing it right now. <laughs> this is, is this a recent thing or is this, uh, it's, but you guys no. been doing it. Uh, we, um, I mean, we've always offered it. Um, when we were in LA, you know, we worked with a fulfillment house. That's all they did. Um, and so we had our own, uh, you know, like U-Haul truck, uh, that, you know, had house of ink on it, everything on it. And we would load up the pallets into it and drive it to the fulfillment house and they would fulfill it and we'd pick it back up and take it on to UPS. Um, but uh, here we kind of had to get into doing it in house. And so uh, it's something that, you know, there's a ton of cool machines out there that you can do for fulfillment. But when you're doing, you know, um, like 20,000 pieces, uh, it's, it's tough. It's a huge, you know, um, undertaking. You've got the poly bag costs that, you know, mm -hmm. is now rate, you know, they're expensive. Yeah. Uh, you've got, you know, stickers that you got to print out and, you know, place on there. You've got hang tags if you need to, you know, everything has certain instructions. Um, and so, yeah, it, it can get, uh, Are you stocking really too? overwhelming. Inventory for them? Like for the decorated no, so, inventory? No. So we will, um, right now, I mean, we have the warehouse space to do it. Um, but we'll usually send it to a, uh, true, like, you know, e-commerce fulfillment site, mm. um, where, you know, they'll end up just picking and packing. Um, but we will do the individual, you know, like labeling and all that stuff. Got it. Has that been financially beneficial or do you feel like that's just where the market is to you? Like, as in you have to offer it because everyone else is. And I think nowadays you almost have to, you know, have to offer it. Um, Can it be a profit center for you guys or is it? We do make a profit on it. Um, but you know, if you're, the hard part is, you know, we print a lot of, um, I guess tour stuff. So really it's just printers fold, mm -hmm. uh, and you know, we'll box it up and send it out. Um, if I, you know, if you had to drop, you know, money on a new folding and bagging machine, it would take a while to regain and, you know, recoup that cost. Um, and so for us, it's really just manpower. You know, we have a folder and bagger. Um, but you know, it takes a lot of people to do it. Um, there's things that, you know, machines, you know, can't do. Uh, and, uh, so really, I mean, it's, it's the manpower and just the time and effort that it takes, but you almost kind of have to, you know, have to do it to be able to print for some of these people or else you won't get jobs. Mm -hmm. You know, it's the D2C or, you know, fulfillment. Um, it comes with, uh, you know, with the job. So either don't take it or you do, you know, it's one of those things all or nothing. What about 2024? Is there stuff that you're looking to buy as you think about being more efficient 
Um, so you talked about, you know, the software side and, and kind of the management yeah. side. Is there any equipment purchases that can help with that too? Um, there is. I'll probably have uh, more information uh, at the Atlantic City ISS show. Um, there's a few meetings that uh, I'll be going up to Chicago for pretty soon that oh, I'm looking forward an M&R. to. Yeah. Yeah. So we, um, yeah, so we're going to have some exciting news coming, coming up. Um, but That's yeah, cool. there's definitely. I'm assuming the digital what, side then? Uh, <laughs> you know, kind of all around. Okay. You know, um, yeah. Uh, probably off the record, I could tell you more, yeah, uh, yeah. but I don't want to spoil anything yet. Sure. You know, but we, we've messed around with a, uh, we used to have a Cornet, um, D2G or DTG and uh, wasn't great for what we did. Um, you know, we noticed like you couldn't set the off contact for doing, you know, uh, hoodies and tees at the same time, or, you know, it was pretty finicky. Um, it didn't like humidity, you know, or uh, needed a certain humidity. And, you know, in the South, uh, it was very temperamental. Um, so we ended up, you know, selling that to one of our friends in California and kind of got out of that and mm-hmm. went back to doing what we do, which is screen printing. Uh, but we're looking at some other options and, you know, getting a lot of new equipment in the shop that I, uh, am pretty excited for. That's cool. So, That's exciting stuff. Yeah. Um, does DTF play a role in your space or no, because of the, the volume and quick turns? Um, I would say a little bit like I'm doing a, uh, I'm doing some DTF right now. Um, contract, uh, DTF. Uh, so it it depends on the job, depends on the garment that's picked. Um, you know, it it just really depends on the feel as well. A lot of our, you know, clients want screen printing. They want that, you know, feel, um, it's, you know, I guess it just depends on, you know, the garment that it's getting printed on, you know, kind of quantity and there's a lot of different factors involved, but, um, coming up DTF, uh, will be a big part of what we do. Got it. That's cool. That's interesting that you, you say that. I mean, there's, there's always the, the, you know, and maybe, maybe it's just everybody's biases of what they've been ordering, but it's always interesting as to what the end customer um, people bring up is like, do they care? Do they even notice or not? I don't know. It'll be interesting to see, I guess. Uh, I guess the, the, the speed though, at which you're turning some of these jobs around from same day is yeah, kind of prohibitive to really pumping out on screen printing. Yeah. We're, um, I mean, we're really excited for, you know, if we, if we get into the DTF side, it's almost, you know, as a screen printer, it's like the, you know, dark side, you know, um, DTF and DTG. Uh, but, you know, if we get into it, then, uh, e-commerce and, you know, lower quantities will play a big role for it. Um, you know, it, it's something that's obviously going to be cheaper than a, uh, screen print. Um, especially when you have like screen charges and, you know, setup charges, you know, everything that goes into it you really don't have that with DTF. Um, so it'll give us the ability to kind of take on more and not say no to any jobs, which I'm looking forward to, um, you know, which will help us out. So yeah, it's going to offer a lot more than what we do now. Um, we're getting, you know, into the, uh, streetwear market. Um, I've got a few sales reps that are, you know, discussing some uh different branding opportunities with uh you know local music artists um local you know artists uh streetwear companies small clothing brand stuff which you know uh DTF is perfect for so there is a need and a you know uh necessity for it i guess um and it's something that we haven't really offered uh, but I am excited to kind of dive into that and, you know, start going down that rabbit hole. <laughs> what, uh, wrapping up, like, what do you think is your, as a leader, 
right, of Torch's Print Shop. Where do you think you want to improve, you know, as, you know, as an owner, as a leader, as, as someone the team looks up to? And the reason I ask this is because I think we're all kind of working on different elements. Like our businesses tend to be, it seems like almost mimics of our, our personality or like what we really care yeah. about. You know, it's like some yeah. people who care a ton about printing are buying a lot of equipment and always testing things. Um, I cared a lot about product and that's where I invested a lot in engineering and probably underinvested in, in more marketing and sales. Um, yeah. And now that was, that creates a void, I feel like. And that was like, okay, I need to be better at that and feeling more comfortable investing there or, um, yeah. to, to really grow. What do you think those are for you? And maybe it's even boxed um, into this year as far as do, what you're thinking about. Yeah. I mean, really like moving forward, I think the biggest thing for us is, uh, we've never, you know, really been huge on social media. Um, and part of that goes into, you know, signing NDAs with certain clients that, you know, so I'm not able to show a lot of the printing that we do which in return hurts your, you know, ability to post cool stuff on social media for us. And I think me moving forward, you know, getting a, um, building a platform, you know, and a, uh, kind of a social media backing for our business, uh, is going to be the focus, um, for this year. So getting on the podcast, getting more involved with, you know, the industry as a whole education, teaching, um, you know, that's what we're going to be focusing on. Uh, you know, I, I know the production in and out. I know how to, you know, screen printing comes easy. Uh, but it's, you know, getting, getting us out there, um, letting people know what we do, you know, jumping on podcasts and stuff. We want to start getting more involved that way and, and teaching about, uh, you know, screen printing. Uh, it's a skill, you know, it's a trade. Um, there's less and less people kind of, you know, really thinking of it as a career. Um, and, uh, you know, that's what we want to, you know, offer to people is, you know, yeah, it is a career and you can, you know, do really, really well in this industry. Um, you just gotta, you know, learn it and work hard. So does that, does that, ref does that like push like more directly for you? Is that d because you know, being passionate about the production side or is it? And so now it's like, ah, I need to get sort of out of my comfort zone and, um, and be more public or just basically get into more marketing. Yeah. So the, I mean, really it's getting out of our comfort zone here. Um, and it's, you know, we were all basically just word of mouth. You know, we didn't put out ads. We haven't, you know, really used any marketing tools. Um, you know, we don't have a social media person. Mm -hmm. Uh, and so, you know, really the marketing for us is a way to get, um, exposure, uh, you know, show people what we're doing, you know, get new clients, but at the same time, you know, we want to teach it. Um, you know, we, at our shop, we always tell people, Hey, we've, we've had, you know, 28 years going on 29, uh, years of mistakes, you know, these are mistakes that we've made, you know, over that time period that could make or break other companies that are just starting. Yeah. Um, and so how do we, you know, transfer our knowledge and things that we've learned, uh, to help, you know, new people in the industry? Yeah. Um, well, what about though, like even you, I guess I'm just, I was digging deeper because I was thinking back and I was like, you know what? I, I'm not. I tried to take a step back and not be as direct, for example, with feedback with the team um, because I just want to hear, I want to process it, I want to think about it. But I feel like that turns into not being direct with my expectations. And then I get frustrated later because I'm thinking it, <laughs> but I'm not uh, like executing on it super well if, as far as verbalizing it. Like, are there, are there things like that that you think are, I, I, I got to level up this quality? So I think, you know, for me, it's communication. So it would be like communication with the back of our shop. You know, there's always, when you get to a certain point, you know, it, it becomes a almost me versus them uh, mentality between, you know, the front 
you know, admin business side of the, the business and, um, you know, the production team. And so it's, you know, me, you know, how can I better bridge that gap and communicate between the two to where, you know, things don't get lost in translation. And that's where, you know, I've really been, um, excited and, you know, focusing on how can I use Printavo to be that bridge? You know, what information, you know, can I share with the production team that will make sure, you know, they have those notes that, you know, it's a split ship or, you know, certain things are going to this, or, you know, we have two samples that have to go to New York or, you know, it's, uh, it's really the communication and just kind of streamlining that workflow. Um, yeah, I will say, you know, I've been, uh, focusing on bringing us to the 21st century. You know, we were doing before Printavo, we were doing it pretty old school, you know, using a, a magnet board with, you know, different magnets for jobs. And that was kind of our power scheduler. You know, we were moving it around playing battleship and Tetris and, you know, it was getting, um, it was getting pretty crazy. Uh, you know, papers get lost. Uh, and, you know, a majority of you know our printers, English is a second language, so it makes it very tough. Um, and so, you know, the ability to kind of streamline everything, put everything on a tablet, you know, that doesn't get lost or, you know, you can always pull it back up. It makes it much, much easier to, uh, communicate. So right. that's what, that's what I think I would be, I will be focusing on, you know, coming up. Awesome. Kobe, I appreciate the transparency and, and just sharing your guys' yeah. journey at Torches. Um, you guys, where, where can people reach out or, or follow you guys or, yeah, uh, we are redoing our website to, you know, showcase more of what we do and to add some new features like the DTF and some training. Uh, we will be offering training courses, um, you know, later this year, which we're excited about. Um, but, you know, online it's torchesprintshop.com. Awesome. Uh, and the same yeah, on pretty Instagram. Pretty much on everything. Yeah, same on Instagram and pretty much everything else. So, um, we're looking forward to, uh, doing some cool stuff, seeing you guys at the shows coming up and yeah, working with you. Hey, cool. And we'll keep our eyes peeled for the MNR announcement as well. Print officers, thank you so much for listening. We appreciate you guys. Kobe Larson, we appreciate you, of course, for, for hopping on and spending an hour with us this morning. We'll see you on the next episode. See you next week, guys. Bye. See you guys. Thanks so much for listening. Hopefully that was informative. Don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to like. Don't forget to hit the bell for notifications if you enjoyed this video. If you enjoy all the stuff we're putting out, it's really helpful. We love to just be able to see it. That means that we're doing a good job. To subscribe, hit the bell for notifications and hit the like button. And I'll see you in the next episode. Bye.